Hallelujah, our Christ is risen. We continue to celebrate the resurrection on this fourth Sunday of Easter, uh, also traditionally known as Good Shepherd Sunday. So the lessons today uh, focus on Jesus as our Good Shepherd. We have the traditional Psalm 23, which uh, reminds us that he leads us to green pastures. And then in John chapter 10, Jesus takes up the, uh, the name Good Shepherd as he calls himself the Good Shepherd who cares for the sheep. It's a, always a neat experience on Good Shepherd Sunday to think about Jesus embracing the, the lambs, and, and today it is our pleasure to uh, welcome into God's family through Holy Baptism uh, uh, Hazel and Theodore and Werman, who are to be baptized as part of our service today, so that, that is also a special part of our worship. I'd like to draw your attention to a few other things this morning. If you turn to page five of your bulletin, you'll see there um, we continue our sponsorship of the Gaines International for our mission of the month, uh, spreading the, the word of God throughout the world just by placing it, especially by placing the Bible in locations where people might especially want it, uh, in a hospital, in a nursing home, in a prison. Uh, we are thankful for that ministry. Also, you'll see uh, some of our ladies are meeting this Tuesday, April 24th, to, uh, to begin decorating the trees from home, which we do every year. Um, I know it's April, and sometimes you think of Christmas in July, but Christmas in April, wow, that's early. But you, you really got to get these ready to go early so that they can get the trees at the proper time for them to really celebrate Christmas. So our ladies will be beginning this week. If you have interest in joining them, please feel free to do so on Tuesday. Uh, Rose Daly has asked to make an announcement. Uh, Rose, if you would, where are you? Uh, this is about the one of sale, which is on the back of it.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born as children of a fallen humanity. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn as children of God and inheritors of eternal life. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the Church, which is the body of Christ. As we live with Him and with His people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. I present Theodore Lee, Hazel Marie, to receive the sacrament of holy baptism. In Christian devotion, you have presented these children for holy baptism. You should therefore faithfully bring them to the services of God's house and teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. As they grow in years, you should place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and provide for their instruction in the Christian faith, the living in the covenant of their baptism, gathering at the altar to receive the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, and in communion with the faith of Christ's church, they may lead godly lives till the day of Jesus Christ's return. As sponsors, it is your privilege to support and encourage Theodore and Hazel in their Christian growth in faith. You too ought to remind them of their baptism. Remember them in your prayers, and as much as in you lies, give your counsel and aid. You are committed to them that they be properly instructed in the Christian faith and have every opportunity to participate in Christ's church. This, then, all of you intend gladly and willingly to do. We do. We do. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to the eleven disciples, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. The holy apostles of the Lord have also written, The promise is for you and your children, and baptism now saves you. Hear also how our Lord Jesus Christ has opened the kingdom of God to little children. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. I now ask all of you here present to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and to confess the faith of the Church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil and all his empty promises, his wicked works and ways? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And then he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Theodore Lee Worman, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Hazel Marie Werner. I baptize you in the name of the Father. Let us pray. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for raising them up to new life through holy baptism. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Theodore and Hazel, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Receive the sign of the Holy Cross, both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the Crucified, and as a sign that you have been redeemed by our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive these candles. Let them remind you always of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. And let your gospel light shine before others, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon the family of these children. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Make them examples and teachers of righteousness for Theodore and Hazel. Strengthen them in their own baptism, so that they may share eternally with Theodore and Hazel the salvation you have given them, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please face the congregation. Now may the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ grant you to be strengthened with might through his Holy Spirit. May Christ live in your heart by faith, and you may, may you be filled with all the fullness of God himself. Go in peace and enjoy. Amen. I'd like to introduce to you Katie Marie and Theodore Lee. They are now part of our family of faith and sheep of God's kingdom. Well, Let's, uh, let's sing the, the last verse of the hymn together, please.
guys can go in the second row too. Mr. Seaman will let you in. He's a nice guy. You might have to slide down a little further, Harry. <laughs> it's nice to have most of the younger Christians up here, so. Good morning. I'd like to welcome, I'd like you to be able to welcome our newest member of the family of faith. I, I brought them here to you. Oh, wait a minute. This isn't the newest member of our family of faith, is it? What's this? It's a, it's a sheep, isn't it? This is Good Shepherd Sunday. And, and we think about, on this Sunday, how a shepherd cares for the sheep, how he watches over them, how he protects them, how he, uh, he maybe even is willing to, to give up a lot for the sheep. And we think about how Jesus loves us like a shepherd loves his sheep in an even greater way because the text we today is going to say Jesus didn't just love the sheep and take care of them, he took care of them to the point of laying down his life for the sheep. He loves each one of us with that kind of love. And I would like to introduce to you the newest members of our family. So let's uh, let's see. Can I do this? What do you think? No, you don't know what I'm going to do. All right. Do you know which one is which? Do I? <laughs> I do. No, this is Hazel and this is Theodore. Yeah, you do that too? Yeah. These are new sheep in God's kingdom, new children of God, made his own by holy baptism, and given the gift, a very special gift today, the gift of the Holy Spirit and the faith. Very special day for these guys today, and, and every day I, I, we always need to remember that we are God's children. Thanks for coming out this morning. You can go back to your seats now, and uh, we're going to enjoy Silas singing about being Jesus.
say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause to reflect upon our need for God's grace. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not held you with our whole heart. We have not held our neighbors as ourselves. We just deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. 
following you. Lead us to the living waters of your holy word. Guide us to walk in your paths. Protect us from the schemes of the evil one. And strengthen us for service in your kingdom. In your precious name we pray, who lives with the Father and the Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please again be seated at me. Uh, the first lesson, Acts chapter 4, the continuing story of the spread of the, the gospel after the resurrection by the early Christian church. The first reading is from the book of Acts, beginning with the fourth uh, chapter. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. The next day, the rulers, elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so, and so were Cyphus, John, Alexander, and the other men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord.
Our epistle lesson this morning is from the first book of John, chapter 3, verses 16 to 24. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This then is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and we receive and receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Those who obey his commands live in him, and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. This is the word of the Lord.
Grace, mercy, peace, and joy are yours from God our Father and from our resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The text I want to spend some time on today is the 10th chapter of St. John, where we read these words. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This is our text. Remember the Alamo, goes the famous saying. Do you know why? Do you remember the Alamo, its significance? I'm guessing a lot of people don't anymore. Well, it's a famous phrase because men like Colonel Barrett Travis, Davy Crockett, and James Bowie, along with 179 others, hugely outnumbered by Mexican forces, stood their ground and fought off the inevitable conquest for 13 days. Eventually, they all gave their lives, but not for naught. While they were keeping Santa Ana's troops busy, the Texas Army was amassing and eventually would win Texas independence. So the reason the battle is so famous is because of the dedication of the men inside who simply refused to lay down and surrender. I'm pretty convinced no one would be remembering the Alamo if those guys had just all waved a white flag and said, we give up. In 1976, another famous story of grit and determination took place in Uganda when hijackers successfully landed a plane in Entebbe airport and demanded that Israeli leaders give them an exchange of political prisoners for the passengers they were holding hostage. Then Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, in a gutsy move, refused to negotiate with terrorists and instead orchestrated a secret raid on the airport, which took the hijackers by surprise and rescued nearly all of the hostages. Again, I'm pretty sure that the raid would not be remembered if Rabin had just laid down and made the trade and not stood his ground. Laying down. It seems like a sign of weakness, of giving up, of fear. We generally are taught that we should stand up for ourselves and fight for our freedoms, that we are who we are largely because of our willingness to stand up for what's right. And we are proud of our military men, our leaders, our students, when they stand up for principles and defend them. Who lays down when the going gets tough? Is it the coward, the, the weakling, the timid, the quitter? Or to use a term for my youth, the fraidy cat. And none of us wants to be that, right? Laying down. But today in our lessons, please note the amount of times we see those words laying down as it relates to our Lord Jesus Christ. First John, our epistle lesson, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. John 10:11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Four verses later, I know my sheep and my sheep know me, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Verse 17, the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. Lay down. Lay down, lay down. Jesus, the one we worship with all our hearts, the one who is lauded as worthy of all glory, honor, and praise, far above all rulers and authorities, characterizes himself as one who lays down, gives himself up, succumbs to the enemy by choice. 
Isaiah describes him like this. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. The long and short of it is that when it comes to our salvation, Jesus seemingly let the evil one have his way. He laid down and permitted himself to be mocked, beaten, tortured, and crucified. He grit his teeth and allowed his enemies to get the upper hand, to win the battle, it seemed, to be on top. But not because he was a victim, a quitter, a fraidy cat, not because he was out of control, rather because he chooses God's plan over man's ideas, God's strength over man's pride. Jesus understood what it took to win our salvation, and so he humbled himself and became obedient, obedient unto death. And in the end, because of Jesus' humility and self-sacrifice, God accepted his sacrifice as the price necessary to pay for our failure and atone for our sin. Laying down was the only way to win the victory, the only way to accomplish our salvation. And so Jesus became the Lamb of God who was led to the slaughter on our behalf. Laying down. What about us? Are we ready to be like Jesus and able to see the bigger picture when it comes to our pride? Are we ready to let God's purposes and plans overshadow our opinions and feelings and desires? The two brothers weren't. <clears throat> they were so angry at each other due to perceived inequities in the family inheritance that they just couldn't let go. They knew that God called them to forgiveness, but they just couldn't get past their hurt feelings and inner anger. It was wrapped inside their belly like a malignant tumor. And so, they wouldn't speak to each other anymore, even when they went to church, even when they knelt at the altar. Dave wasn't ready to lay it down either. His idea at work had been shelved in favor of the idea of his subordinate co-worker, Jerry. And Dave felt shunned and disrespected. And so from then on, he began to give something far less than his best effort at work. And he did everything he could to undermine Jerry's work. In fact, he mischaracterized him. He mocked him behind his back and urged others to disrespect Jerry too. Dave was committed to not laying down. So was Andrea. Andrea got cut off in traffic by some speeding hotshot kid, and now she saw him riding on the bumper of some older couple. Don't compromise your integrity. I'm sorry. Saw him riding on the back of some other older couple. Oh, how Andrea wanted to give him a taste of his own medicine. Oh, how she wanted to slow him down. Her foot stepped harder on the pedal. Her adrenaline started pumping. Soon she was on his tail, shouting at him. You've been there. I know you have. You hear the Spirit's voice whispering in your ear. Let go of it. It's not really that important. Don't compromise your integrity. Don't compromise your witness. Don't give in to the ways of the tempter. Lay down. Give it up. As St. John says in our epistle lesson, Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. You hear that voice, but in the other ear you hear this. But it's not fair. How dare they? Stand up for yourself. Assert yourself. Don't back down an inch. Whose voice will you listen to? Many of us try to find a middle position. 
In our heads, we consider the voice of good reason that tries to justify giving in to our pride or anger. And building off of that, we create a justifiable case for doing what we know is not of God. Yes, a lesson must be taught. Yes, there is no other way to accomplish the task. Yes, the end justifies the means. Politicians are good at this. They spew vitriolic venom at rival politicians with the assumption it's okay to break the Eighth Commandment because they're seeking the greater good. Because they're right. Because the other guy is a fool. Church leaders can do it too. Under the banner of defending faith and truth, they can misrepresent and mischaracterize those who differ theologically as tools of the tempter. They may even bend the truth themselves to suit their argument. But then we get back to our text. Lay down. Lay down. Jesus laid down his life. He did it for you and me. He did it without thought of what he deserved, what his rights were. He did it because his love for his Father and his love for his people was far greater than the voices that appealed to his human pride. He did it for us. Laid down his life. And brothers and sisters in Christ, that same spirit that enabled our good shepherd to lay down his life is also at work among us. This morning, Amanda and her family have declared that this Savior, the one who laid down his life for us, is the one they want the twins to follow. That they want the good shepherd to guide and lead Hazel and Theo into the ways of the Heavenly Father. We've joined them in that pledge, committed ourselves as a congregation to being part of the team to help Amanda and the family raise Hazel and Theo under the gospel. If we take that seriously, all of us, from parent to sponsor to grandparent and congregation member and pastor, then that means that we want not only to tell these little ones about the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for the sheep. We want to show that good shepherd in the way we live and speak and act. In other words, our goal is to show them that God's will and God's ways are the most important thing and that we are ready when called by him to lay down our pride, our power, our stature so that we can serve him who first served us. And what does that mean? A lot. It means we show them forgiveness, even in those days when it might seem illogical, irrational, unreasonable, because the Good Shepherd forgave sinners like us when we were lost in trespasses and sins. But there's more. It means we will show them the value of the Word of God, even when we are busy with other things. We'll make time for it because the Good Shepherd continues to feed us with the good news, and we want to worship Him with our hearts and lives. But there's more. We will show them generosity, even when we have other ways that we can use our resources for ourselves, because we value the strength of the Gospel to change lives and transform people, and we know that we are part of His plan to accomplish His work. But there's still more that we all need to know, and we want to show to these little babies, and to each other. We will show them hope, joy, peace, patience. We will encourage them to see that the Good Shepherd is there for them day after day, that He loves them and so do we. We'll show it in our kindness, our compassion, our words of encouragement. Well, this could go on and on. But let's just say this. We are all children of the Good Shepherd. And having been blessed by His servant leadership, we want to shepherd one another. We realize we're part of a team here. We're part of a family. And that